Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. It's a semi-final preview. Rafael Nadal versus Alexander Zverev. Roland Garros 2022. <sighs> what a couple of quarterfinals, by the way, both were involved in. First, Alexander Zverev against Carlos Alcaraz. And of course, an all-time classic. Two of the GOATs coming together. Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic. And Djokovic, unfortunately not able to to capitalize like he did last year, winning in four sets in the semi-final. In the quarterfinals, Nadal had the upper hand this year, beating him in four sets in four very entertaining sets, coming back from 5-2 down in the final set to then win 7-6 in a tiebreaker, um, which was yeah incredible, to be fair to say the least. We're going to go into, of course, the matchup between Nadal and Zverev, though. And, of course, we'll end up touching on, inevitably, uh, the previous quarterfinals, just just because they're the most recent matches uh, that both have had, and give you a, a very good indicator and gauge of where they're at form-wise. We'll also talk about how they played throughout the tournament and their run to this stage as well. Uh, of course, before we get into a, into that though, please remember to hit the like button, please, if you haven't done so already, and do subscribe if you're new, if you're a YouTube watcher or listener. Also, do check out the membership scheme. You Well, it's not a scheme, it's just a membership. You can click the join button uh, after subscribing. And when you click the join button, there's some cool little perks that you can get from it as well. Uh, we've already had quite a few people joining as well. So really great to have you guys on board. And in fact, I think our most recent uh, member was Craig Sevenoaks. Thanks very much, Craig, for joining. And uh, he actually went to the second tier as well, which is even more uh, well, it's just incredible, actually. So thanks, really appreciate that. Uh, we also had Carol as well. And uh, yeah, Carol on the... Uh, Carol, Gary, Craig, Lexi, Diego, Hassan. So shout out to all of the members. Thank you so much for getting involved. Um, if you're also a podcast listener or watcher, leave a rating or review. Read us, help us out. We are starting to climb the rankings, actually, in the podcast rankings. And it's interesting. Uh, actually in the like top five in some countries. Not the UK or US, by the way, but some other countries, which is really cool. And uh, it does fluctuate, but yeah, really cool to see. <sighs> right. Let's get into this then. Rafa Nadal versus Alexander Zverev. Who's the favorite? Now, going into this match after Nadal beat Djokovic, despite it being, a, even though it was four sets, it was a marathon for four sets. I mean, one of the sets was over 18 minutes long, so an hour and 25 minutes, I think it was. Nadal, you might say, oh, hold on, but with his foot and, you know, physicality of it, is he going to be fresh enough? He looks perfectly fine, if I'm being honest with you. No issues with the foot. He did say after uh, when they asked him about it that, you know, in Rome, he didn't have a doctor with him. Here at Roland Garros, he did. He said, look, it, it makes a difference. There's certain things you can do. I think alluding to the fact that he's probably had cortisone injections. That's just me assuming, by the way. He's had some something done right, which is obviously going to be some type of legal procedure they're allowed to do. A lot of football players towards the back end of their career when they're trying to play games and they know they don't have much long left in their career, whether it's their last season or last two seasons, they end up having cortisone injections. And football, when I say football, I mean soccer. And I think in NFL as well, the same thing. But anyways... And for Nadal, I think that's what he's thinking about. Now, I don't know whether this is going to be his last season. I'm not going to speculate. I, I would say I'd be surprised if we see him past next year, if that makes sense. So I don't see him playing in the 2024 season. But who knows? I have no idea with these goats. It's just so hard to predict. But that, I think, then puts to one side the the doubts that he's going to be fit. Unless he gets injured, that's a different scenario. But in terms of his foot, uh, he's going to play through that pain um, and he'll be able to play through it because of the injections. Now, the, well, the injections that I've just assumed that he's having. So physically, he's going to be fine. So we don't need to worry about that. So we can put that to one side. We're, we're going to get a fully fit, in quote-unquote, Nadal, right? As in someone who's physically going to be uh, able to play, play over five sets, etc. So that's a factor we don't need to, to talk about now. Put it to one side, chuck it into, chuck it to bed, put it to bed even. Uh, we don't want to chuck someone in bed, do we? You put them to bed, put, them, put it to sleep, and say, yeah, okay, done. And it's on his vera of Carlos Alcaraz in what can only be, be described as an upset. And ironically, I actually did a poll on the potential semi-finalists, and I put, of course, all four permutations, and I said, look, out of everyone on the channel, 
what do you guys think? Who do you think is going to be in the semifinals? I said, here's the four options. Vote for who you think is going to be in the semifinals. Now, guess what was the top pick? Djokovic versus Alcaraz. No surprise there, right? Ironically, of course, the semifinal we're going to get is Nadal versus Zverev. Now, that's hilarious because Nadal versus Zverev was one of the least likely scenarios in the sense that it's the complete opposite of what people voted for, the majority voted for. But 26% of people, only 26% of people voted for Nadal versus Zverev, 35% for Djokovic, Alcaraz, uh, and then a couple, you know, I don't need to go into the other percentages. But yeah, just really intriguing. On Twitter, I did the same thing. 17%, I think it was, or 16.7% was a kind of predicted Nadal versus Zverev. So not many people were expecting this to be the semi-final matchup, but here we go, we got it. And no doubt, they were both the underdogs going into the quarterfinals. They both won. Now, when I say underdogs, we're not talking about a, you know, I, I think if we're talking about proper underdogs, you might say, well, okay, maybe Marin Cilic against, at the moment, even though he's in great form, against a Djokovic or Nadal, that's an underdog. Like, he's a real underdog there, right? I think Alcaraz isn't because he's beaten Nadal and Djokovic recently. Yes, he's still the, he's actually still the the I guess he would be the underdog against Djokovic and Nadal but against Zverev no because you know Zverev's not that level so Alcaraz was a favorite so was Djokovic both guys came out unscathed in the end a really good performance from Zverev I can't emphasize it enough I was really impressed with mainly the way he served uh he served extremely well and we'll get into I guess how he's done throughout the whole season well not the whole season but the whole uh, tournament because I wasn't impressed with him at all I have to say until the Alcaraz match I thought he was very very average often in straight sets Baez I've covered that in commentary for it and he was lucky to win that Baez played some really good tennis and he almost beat him and it went to five sets Zverev had to win in uh, the fifth set seven five and I think he was a breakdown if I'm not mistaken in that fifth set the Nakashima he won in straight sets fine Zapata Morales, I mean, the first set was a tiebreaker, 13-11. He was just kind of, everything was kind of pushed back into court. First set percentage, to be fair, I think for him has been pretty good throughout. I think it's been about the 70% mark. Um, I'll have to have a quick look at that, actually, as I'm looking through them. And look, I mean, yeah, it's been just below the 70% mark, which is good. But first set points one hasn't been that high. And I think that's what's been the most disappointing for Zverev um, is the fact that his first serve points one wasn't particularly high. It's kind of below the 70% mark as well, which is surprising with someone with someone who has such an incredible, incredible first serve. He should be winning more free points behind the first serve. And he no doubt is winning points, winning free points behind the first serve, but he's not backing it up well enough on the one plus plays when he needs to actually play an extra shot play an extra shot or two shots. Do you know what I mean? As in he's expecting almost, okay, well, I'm going to serve big, I'll get three points. And then if it comes back my way, I'm just going to play conservative tennis. And it's like, well, why would you do that? You're a good enough player, especially against the guys that he's been facing, apart from maybe Alcaraz, to win the longer rallies, to win the shorter points, to actually play proactive tennis and shorten points rather than getting into a grinding rally. And that's been, I guess, one of the most frustrating things about watching Alexander Zverev is the, his lack of intent when he rallies from the back of the court. Uh, with the backhand, to be fair to him, it's normally okay, especially the backhand cross. When he's seeing the backhand on the line, we know he is not going to push the backhand back into play. But the forehand at times, he just pushes back. He'll just push it back into court. And it's a very loopy forehand, a lot of a lot of coverage over the net, not really high top spin. It's almost like a lob forehand. Uh, and he's kind of, his leading arm is barely there. Um, it's just, it's almost like a lazy forehand, if that makes sense. And it's not effortless either. It's just a lazy forehand. Now, what he did really well against Alcaraz is serve really well. So 71% of first serves in, but... He backed it up nicely as well because he won 73% of first serve points won and 58% of second serve points won. Now, part of that was down to the fact that Alcaraz didn't return particularly well, I have to say. But the other reason was that Zverev was hitting his spot, especially on the ad side into the backhand of Alcaraz. Alcaraz struggled 
with the big booming step into his backhand and he either hit the backhand return into the net or wide or long or it was a short return and Zverev actually to be fair to Zverev when the ball's short he is clinical he puts it away but that's kind of like a bare minimum if you're a player who's in the top 10 top 15 top 20 even so yeah he just he ended up winning a lot of points on serve because of it big serving and then also doing well behind the serve coming forward uh, because he hit his spots, it meant they didn't really need to hit a lot from the back of the court. Uh, he was either inside the court, it was volleying, which I thought was really good. At times, he come and serve and volley. Really, really intelligent play against Alcaraz, especially if you're going to push him back. And Alcaraz will will stand pretty far back, actually, on the return as well. Uh, so it was good. It was really good, I thought, as a clinical serving display from the German. Seven aces as well. The double faults. They kind of did creep in. There were six double faults and they were creeping in towards the end. He served two in a row and you're thinking, yeah, okay. But generally, he's served, well, he served very well in this. Um, in, throughout the tournament, he served okay, but he stepped it up against Alcaraz. I think he relished being the underdog and he just took it on. And I think he knew that everyone expected Alcaraz to win. He kind of sport the party, I guess. The other thing that I thought he did really well was the backhand return. Now, the backhand return, and I think Alcaraz, to be fair, made a mistake on the on his ad side when serving, which was going into the backhand a lot. Now, I don't know why he did that, because Zverev's backhand return is probably his better return out of the forehand and backhand. Now, that's simplifying it. I'm not talking about it from a kick serve backhand return, slice serve backhand return. I'm just, let's just simplify it at the moment. His backhand return is better, no doubt, in my eyes anyway. So Alcaraz was going into that side, and you're just thinking, why are you doing that? And Zverev was giving him hell on the return games at times. Really good returns cross court, uh, great depth, and then even going down the line. I mean, the way that he won the match was with a second serve backhand return down the line winner. It was incredible to see. So the backhand wing was firing beautifully. And to be fair, normally it's very reliable uh, and it can be more hurtful than the forehand. But I think generally it was just better. He hit more winners off that side than the forehand, actually, throughout the Alcaraz match. Now, there's two reasons for that. One, because he was hitting it cleaner. But two, Alcaraz was predominantly even the rallies going into the backhand. And it's not the right option to just pummel the Zvera backhand because it is, I would say, the more reliable side. And not just the more reliable side, he hits with more depth on that side. And he can actually probably hurt you even more on that side at times. So... I think Alcaraz didn't mix it up and vary up enough trying to go into the forehand. I think if you get Zverev on the run on the forehand, he's not comfortable there at all. So he did start to do that, Alcaraz, um, as the match wore on, but he was already like two sets of love down when that started happening uh, more frequently anyway. And it was kind of like li too little too late. Um, the other thing that Zverev did well was when Alcaraz was coming into the net. So the two times Alcaraz got broken, Zverev hit really good return uh, really good returns and Alcaraz came to the net the first set and it was a second serve he came into the net after the kick serve uh, on the ad court into the backhand the backhand was really hardly like kind of well hit low over the net and Alcaraz had a tough tough volley and hit it into the net he got broken and then there was one break of serve in the first set he lost it second serve similar story first serve this time and Alcaraz sorry Zverev again with a good backhand return and again, Alcaraz on the stretch on the volley goes into the net. They weren't unforced errors. They were good returns. And they were probably two serves that Alcaraz shouldn't have come in behind, but he did. And Zverev made him pay. Now, Nadal is someone who will try and utilize the serve volley at times. Probably not as much as Alcaraz. Alcaraz came in a lot behind the first serve and even the second serve at times. And that is something that he kind of has in his locker. And it's good to see the variation. But I think maybe the times that he chose to do it weren't the right times. Um, you know, in, in spots anyway throughout the match. And he did pay for it dearly because the two breaks of serve were because of that in the first two sets. And then he lost his first two sets because of it. Third set he won, of course, and then fourth set. Zverev, I thought, did really well because he was serving at 5-4. He got broken. And you're thinking, okay, right, mentally he's broke. He's kind of, you know, he's collapsing here. He's capitulating. He didn't. He didn't. He got take. He then got taken to a tiebreaker because of it, and he won the tiebreaker. And that was one of the most impressive things about Zverev in this tournament was the fact that he won the tiebreaker nine seven. 
He played a really good breaker, served well, um, stuck with Alcaraz, saved set points, if I'm not mistaken, as well, and then and won there and then. And I just thought to myself, you know what? That is a big boost for him, confidence-wise. The fact that he's come through against Alcaraz, a lot of people say, and, and it's true, Alcaraz has been really clutch in big moments in the last few months. So the fact that Zverev managed to, you know, I don't want to say it, but out-clutch, you know, uh, Alcaraz in this, or kind of outplay Alcaraz and mentally uh, be stronger than the young Spaniard in that tiebreaker was a big, big deal for me. Uh, and I think it bodes well for him going into the semi-final for Zverev. So for Nadal, what's he been doing well? Well, I think the he definitely stepped up against Djokovic, no doubt. I mean, his return game was incredible, I thought, for the most part. There were a lot of short returns at times, but Zverev, like Djokovic, is not going to go massive if the return is shorter, especially if it's dragged out. Like, he goes forehand cross-court Nadal, and it kind of drags out the opponent, even if it's shorter, and then... Zverev will probably go backhand cross, which is exactly what Djokovic was doing. Nadal will read it as he was doing against Djokovic. So there's not a massive change there. Um, I think for Nadal, he needs to serve like he did against Djokovic. Some really good serves, especially out wide on the Jew side. Flat serves out wide into the forehand of Zverev. Because as we said, and as I kind of noted as well earlier, Zverev's best back, best return is the backhand. So what... I think, you know, Nadal needs to do is not just go into the forehand. He needs to vary it up. But I, there's two things I would do. I would try and utilize the serve out wide on the juice side, sorry, even, into the forehand. So the flat serve from the juice side, go into the forehand of uh, Zverev, get him to hit the return on the stretch, and then also go into the body at times. And it maybe go into the body from the ad side, swing it into the body, right, and, and get Zverev to hit an awkward return because he will hit an awkward forehand. There he will. He might even go onto the backhand side. Then you need to adjust, of course, where you're placing that first serve. But for me, like Zverev doesn't mind taking the ball shoulder height. He's a very tall, tall player. He's six foot six. Nadal hitting big, you know, booming forehands cross court with high top spin, you know, at the kind of shoulders of Zverev isn't going to cause him massive problems. That's not kind of the issue for Zverev because the backhand will hold up. And I actually think, and it might be controversial, but I think he'll have better success on the backhand than Djokovic did yesterday. And Djokovic, in my opinion, has the best two-hander in the game, but I don't think he struck it as well as he would have hoped for or expected. And I think Nadal did really well with it as well. He managed to win a lot of the battles against the Djokovic backhand. Whereas with Zverev, I think he will. And someone made a comment uh, on the review I did or post-match analysis I did for Djokovic. And I made a good point that Djokovic wasn't hitting the kick backhand, right? Which is that kind of backhand where he will commit to hitting it early. So if Nadal hits the big, like booming forehand, cross-court lasso forehand, and it, and it kind of kicks up shoulder, shoulder height, Djokovic is kind of waiting and then hitting it at a nice height. Whereas in the past, what he's done is he's kind of got literally got off the ground. So he's mid-air and he kind of hits a kick backhand. So he's taken it um, early. He's taken the backhand early. He's driven through it. And then it gives Nadal problems because he has to then anticipate and then return that backhand very quickly because the opponent's taken it early. And especially if it's going into his forehand, he needs to wind up the forehand. And at times he can have issues then and get caught, right? Um, not being particularly ready, I guess, at times to then receive that ball. So Zverev will do that. He'll do that. Uh, he'll hit that kick backhand. Uh, and even then, because he's taller, he might not need to, but he'll drive through it. He will. He will. And he'll find good angles on the backhand cross, and Nadal will have to deal with that. And that will be something that you know Nadal did really well against Djokovic with. And I guess, actually, for Nadal, if I'm being honest with you, yes, Zverev's a bigger server, and he might have more success with a serve because he served really well I thought, in the match against Alcaraz, whereas Djokovic, I think, served relatively well against Nadal, but probably not as well as we've seen in the past. So if Zverev serves better, that's a big plus. The forehand, I think Djokovic's forehand is, you know, more of a dictating tool, if I'm being honest with you, and probably more hurtful. But I think Zverev will have more success on the backhand, but they're a similar mold in player at times, if that makes sense. There's aspects of their games that are relatively similar. The backhand is one, the backhand return being the kind of strength is another two-handed backhand. Uh, the fact that, you know, both can hit their spots and their serve. 
obviously very, very fit, both of them as well. Djokovic, I think, more elastic, I guess, than uh, Zverev better defensively, although Zverev's anticipation is very good. Uh, and then the, the forehand from Zverev, I think, you know, Nadal will go big into it. He'll go he'll go into it with the forehand and he'll absolutely pummel it. He'll go backhand cross as well and he'll find angles and he'll drag Zverev out onto the forehand and he'll get him into uncomfortable positions on that forehand side. And I don't see Zverev's forehand holding up that well, to be fair. He'll hit the loopy forehand, cross court or down the line. If it's short, Nadal will just step in and he will crunch a forehand in return and it will probably be a winner um, or it will be a shot that then he can come to the net and finish off uh, the point at, at the net. Uh, with a volley or you know he can just come to the net or even stay back and then hit another shot uh, after Zverev has been dragged out into the open court so I think that's a big 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 thing for me is that I think Nadal will have success against the forehand big time in this and he and that also means that he will be able to go into out on the forehand side and be more comfortable to do it because he knows that Zverev's backhand is probably the more solid side and maybe he does want to go into the forehand first. And he might go into the backhand after. A lot of people do that to Nadal, right? They go into the forehand first, uh, but normally at an angle and go at, go at it hard, get him to trying to hit defensive forehands. And then they go into the backhand side. Um, with Zverev, it's probably a, a similar tactic at times, I think. And it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Zverev also has also been standing very far back in the return position. So I think Nadal hitting the serves out wide, from the juice side, as I said, is, is going to be a really good tactic. I think on the ad side, the issue with going out wide is that you go into the backhand side. I think he will do it, but as a lefty, he probably has an advantage there because it swings away from the backhand of the righty ra rather than with, the, I guess, the righty serving on the ad side into the backhand. It kind of naturally will arc a little bit or just at least hold its line um, into the backhand side. So Nadal, if he hits, and he might do this, hit short slice serves out wide on the ad side or short kick serves out wide on the juice side, then on the ad side, sorry. And then he might get a success because even though Zverev is very good at returning on the backhand side, he'll be stretched. He'll be, you know, having to return at kind of ankle height and that'll be awkward. The other thing that I think Nadal might employ is the backhand slice, which he actually utilized quite effectively and very intelligently against Djokovic. And he's been doing it against Medvedev as well. He did it against Medvedev in the Australian Open final. Now, when he's defensively pinned against the wall, uh, there's a couple of things that Nadal can do. Now, he can either go, you know, lasso forehand, a very, like a lot more loopy than usual, give himself time, where it's like a lob forehand, but with high top spin, try and get it deep get himself into kind of position or he can go squash forehand almost, which is like a literally a, a is like a squash forehand and, and it's got kind of slice on it uh, and it's low over the net and it's difficult then for the opponent to get on the front foot again from that point. And normally it gets him back to neutral at least, at least, or if he, uh, well, if he effectively hits it deep enough, that is, or he can go short backhand slice very low over the net and normally what he does is he slices it into the backhand corner or well, backhand side even so that it's naturally spinning away from them as well. So when I say away, I mean to their left as a righty. So uh, it's kind of a bit awkward because it's going off court. Now, he did that quite a few times against Medvedev. He did it quite a few times against Djokovic. And what it is, is it just drags the opponent forward and drags them into the net. Now, because normally he hits it so low over the net and it's normally quite high pace, that backhand slice, it's quite hard then for the opponent because the opponent has to come to the net quickly and it's not a ball that's sitting up nicely for them to hit a winner, winner with. It's not. They have to hit an approach shot and then come to the net. And that's not ideal because a lot of the times the approach shot isn't nailed as much as they'd like. And then Nadal either passes them at the net or he lobs them. Um, and it's just it's a really good tactic to drag your opponent to the net. Now, Medvedev is not comfortable with the net, so that was a really good tactic. Djokovic is actually a lot more comfortable with the net, but Nadal had a lot of success with it because, one, he's a great passer, and two, he played at the right moments where Djokovic was kind of very far back, pushed back, and then had to almost hit it, uh, you know, whilst very stretched and lunging for it. Against Zverev, he's not as, he's not as quick as, as Novak. Or arguably maybe not even as quick as Medvedev. That's a good tactic for Nadal to use because one, he's a lot taller. He's tall like Medvedev, about six foot six. He's not going to like hitting 
even the backhand at ankle height, even though he did hit some good backhands, I have to say against Alcaraz at ankle height, I think generally he doesn't like it. And two, when Alcaraz did drag him to the net with a drop shot, at times he did get to it, but for the most part, it did work. It did work um, when Alcaraz utilized it correctly. Now, Nadal doesn't necessarily have to hit a drop shot, which he can hit very, very well. And he probably will hit against Verev because Verev ends up defending very far behind the baseline. It's a really good tactic for Nadal to use, even on the one plus shot at times. If Nadal, if uh, Zverev is standing so far back on the return uh, or a drop volley, even which he might utilize, but he doesn't even need to do that. He needs to that he can hit that short slice backhand um, at an angle at times as well. And Zverev will find it difficult because you probably will go cross court. Or you might even go down the line with the backhand, but it's not going to have enough pace on it to hit, be a winner. And more often than not, and I bet you this, Nadal's probably going to get to it. And he's either going to pass him down the line with the backhand, or he's going to whip the forehand cross court or pass him up the line, and or he's going to go and lob Zverev. Now, Zverev might win a couple of those points, but I tell you what, the majority of the points, I can't see Nadal losing. I really can't. So that's it. That's kind of where I'm at in terms of looking at it from a tactical point of view. Uh, just some findings I've seen from previous matches and things that I think will work for both players. I think for Zverev, he needs to hit his spots on serve. He needs to have a very good serving day. If he has a very good serving day, he's got a chance, no doubt. If he doesn't, if his first serve percentage is low, he's going to have a lot of trouble with Nadal because the second serve returns will come back hard. Um, if he's not hitting his spots as well, if it's into kind of just into the hitting zone of Nadal, he'll have trouble. He needs to hit his spots, get Nadal on the stretch on the return, get him hitting shorter returns, and then he's got to be proactive and come forward. Either go and put the ball away if it's short enough and it's sitting up a knife, or he needs to hit a good approach, come to the net, uh, and kind of just hope that Nadal's not going to be superhuman passing him. Um, or he needs to go drop shot, but then again, he needs to be very, very precise with that drop shot and hope that Nadal's not going to be able to get to it. And we might get a racket on it, but he won't be able to get over the net. He might have to hit a second volley. Uh, so there's just a lot of ifs and buts in terms of, for me, how Zverev's going to win this. Uh, in terms of like a, a percentage, I would say win probability is Nadal 65-70% uh, chance of winning. And uh, yeah, and Zverev, I think 30-35%. That's kind of what I've got. Um what I would say is, uh, what I'd say is that going into this as well, Zverev will take a lot of confidence after that Alcaraz win. So he knows he's really got nothing to lose because no one's expecting him to win. So a underdog Zverev is quite a dangerous Zverev, I have to say as well. Um, he also played his previous match in the day. Now I don't think day or night conditions mean a lot in terms of you know when the match is played, uh, but I do think the fact that he played in the day in the previous match is an advantage because it just means that, advantage for him anyway, because uh, it just means that he's able to adapt to it, whereas Nadal played the night, so it is slightly different conditions, of course. It's colder, the ball doesn't bounce as much. Now, the ball bouncing more, who does that favour? Um, it probably favours no one. I mean, I think it might favour Zverev a little bit because he doesn't really hit through the ball as much, uh, but for Nadal, it also favours his high topspin game. So, as I said, and I said it for the Nadal versus Djokovic match, I don't think night or day means much. I think it's just whoever plays better on the day employs the right tactics. And I think in this case, uh, Nadal is just so, so good at Roland Garros. He knows how to manage the points well, especially the juice games. He's done really well. Um, I think if he serves well, which he did against Djokovic um, and carries on that serving performance, he's, he's been at around 70% the whole tournament. Um, and if the one plus plays are good and he's moving well, which it seems like he is because of the foot, it's going to be really hard for me anyway to see Zverev, you know, winning. Um, I just think it's going to be a real tough match. The head to head is 6 3 to Nadal, by the way. And ironically, Zverev has beaten Nadal on clay. He beat him at Madrid last year, which is a good performance. Um, but it's a completely different type of surface. Madrid is a lot quicker and he's, he loves serving. Uh, on that clay because he gets a lot of free points. Ryan Garros is a lot slower. So let's see. Let's see how it gets, how we get on. I think uh, Nadal's going to fancy his chances big time. I think Zverev will as well. I think Zverev will think this is a big opportunity because whoever wins this will be a favorite against uh, whoever, you know, they play in the final and whoever that may be. I, think, you know, I know Chinch has just won against Rublev in five. 
Rune and Rude are just playing. Out of those three, it doesn't matter who it is, Zverev or Nadal will be the favourites going into it. So this is a big, big, big match in the top half of the draw. Um, yeah, all to play for, of course. My prediction is going to be Nadal in four sets. Um, that's how I see it. I, I can see Zverev taking a set off him potentially, maybe in like a tiebreaker or getting in a single break and, and serving really serving really well for one set. But I can't see him maintaining a really good level over kind of three sets or four sets. I, I thought the level he played against Alcaraz was very good, but I actually think it wouldn't be good enough against Nadal if he played at that level. I think he needs to find a little bit extra even um, if Nadal plays like how he did against Djokovic. And I can't see that happening, not at Roland Garros um, and not with how Zverev has been playing. A lot of people th think and thought that he has potentially regressed in the in this year uh, compared to last year. Where he, by the way, he made the semi-finals of Roland Garros last year as well, lost to Stitsipas in five. I don't think I'm necessarily saying that's the case, but I also don't think he's improved either. If I'm being honest with you, um, I think he's got the game to be anyone on his day when he's playing really well, but there's definitely aspects to his game that need to be improved for him to really be, you know, a, a one, a Grand Slam champion, in my opinion, and to a multiple Grand Slam champion. Now, he might completely prove me wrong and he'll go and win this tournament. Who knows? If he beats Nadal, he, he very well could do. Uh, and that's definitely a possibility. But that's kind of just how I see it at the moment. For Nadal, of course, if he beats uh, Zverev, he's a massive favourite going into the final. Um, but we'll see how we, how we get on. I think it's going to be an intriguing matchup. I think we're going to see some fantastic points, uh, especially at the net. Um, and I think, you know, Zverev, as I said, if he serves big, hits his spots, he's definitely, he'll give himself a very good chance of at least, you know, being competitive, taking a, a set or two. And who knows? Who knows? Zverev could get the job done. Um, we've seen upsets, a lot of upsets so far in this tournament. This just could be another one. Uh, thank you very much, guys, as well, for tuning in. Do really appreciate you guys. Uh, as always, do remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. If you're a podcast listener or watcher, do leave a rating or review. And if you're on YouTube and want to help us out even more, you can do so by clicking that join button to become a member as well. Uh, let me know what you think the scoreline is going to be. And uh, we will be doing live watch longs for this match. So uh, Nadal versus Zverev and most likely the other men's semi-final as well. We'll, we'll definitely be doing Nadal's Zverev though. And we'll be doing the women's final and the men's final. Uh, so keep an eye out for those. Of course, thanks very much, guys. Uh, stay safe and well, and we'll see you on the next video.